All right, everyone, let's go ahead and talk about this information and how we can avoid this information when we are writing clean code. So what exactly is disinformation? Well, disinformation simply means that your code contains a variable naming that is sending the wrong signal. By reading your code, I'm thinking something completely opposite, completely different, which it is not. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. If you create a variable called xib string something, now xib is something in Swift, something in iOS development. So whenever somebody reads this variable xib, they will think about, oh, this is like a fancy zip file. So it's always a good idea not to use these variable names. The other one is IPA. We all know what IPA is if you have been developing iOS applications. If you use the IPA and if you use this variable name somewhere down the road, people will think that, oh, IPA, so it's something to do with release or building the package so that we can release it onto the uh, app store, but it's not, it's just a string. So this is disinformation. So it's not really a good idea to use words that actually already mean something. Now, along the same line, let's say that if we have a structure called account, which has the account number, and we want to create a variable to hold a list of accounts. So we can go ahead and say account list, which can be account, and we can initialize it. Now over here, this is fine, but the problem is disinformation. We are calling it list. Now list can have a very special meaning in different languages. Now in Swift language, there is no such thing as list, you can see, but in Java, in a Dart language, in C sharp, list can mean something very different. So it is a better idea to avoid these kind of things. Instead of calling it account list, why not just call it simply accounts? Much nicer, right? Now, even though we don't have list in Swift language, it is still a good idea. To just use smaller names, much more natural names that you will use when you're talking to someone. Hey, so I have a accounts instead, or oh, I have account list. The same thing is true for if you call it account set. And if you call it account set, now in Swift language, there is something actually called a set, that's a data structure. So if you call it account set and initialize it with an array, now it's disinformation. Now, when I'm using it or somebody else will use account set variable down the road, we, I will think that, oh, it's actually a set, but it's not. And you can see that in Swift language, there is something called a set. So that's why it's never really a good idea to use these names write in the variable names because now it is sending the wrong signal. Let's take a look at another example. Now in this example, we will have three different classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a class for shopping cart service for caching. I'm gonna go ahead and create a class for shopping cart service for user defaults. And I'm going to go ahead and create a class for shopping cart service for network calls. Now, first of all, they have quite a bit long names. That's the first thing. The second thing is that all of them are kind of repeating the first portion of it, right? So this portion is just being repeated. This means that every single time you want to refer to one of these, you're going to type 
shopping cart and now you have to actually look okay shopping cart for cashing shop uh, okay this one you have to read kind of like scan with your eyes left to right quickly to find out that what you are actually talking about so this is not a good idea to use such long names where some part is actually being repeated and you can see in this part this part is being repeated again and again and again and again so you should create some sort of uh, much more simpler names so a simpler name for our caching depending if you're using the manager route or the service route we can go ahead and say cache service if you want to do with the user defaults probably a much better name would be a user defaults or user default service now if you're using a manager kind of a scenario then replace the service with a manager and for network client i would just use network client this is much nicer much smaller names and you don't have to scan left to right to pick up these things because if you are typing something it's only going to come up once you can see cache service it's not going to come cache service network client user default service it's not going to do that all right so always try to avoid disinformation try to keep your code simple don't use the names that exist either in the framework or in the language and that have a special meaning don't try to do that don't try to use things like account set and then initialize it with an array that is disinformation that is going to send a signal to someone which it will represent that oh this is actually a set but it's not it's an array all right so keep things simple try to use much smaller names and don't prefix the names with the whole like okay shopping cart service shopping cart service shopping cart service try to make it simple so that you can easily search them and it doesn't like 10 of them doesn't come up when you're searching for one thing so this is how you can avoid disinformation now in the next lecture we are going to talk about meaningful distinctions and pronouncing pronounceable names